Hello again. Um, I just had a shipment um, from Sizzix. I spotted they had a sale. <laughs> I can't resist a sale, can't resist a bargain. So I bought some more um, 3D embossing folders. And the ones I chose were ones that I thought I could um, cut down part of, you know, the, the embossing because being a clean and simple card maker, I don't normally have a whole um, card front embossed. Um, so I've got this leaf, leafy kind of 1920s kind of thing, a big leaf and a flourishy one. So this is the one I started off to use. Um, and I thought it was lovely. And I thought I could just carry on with the embossing um, and gilding flake techniques and how you can vary what you do with your embossing folder. Yesterday, I made this card using um, this embossing folder for that panel just there. And of course, with an embossing folder like this one, you can get two different different effects because one side, the, um, the um, impression is convex and the other side is concave. So this one, the concave one, was made using kind of the back of the card of the embossing folder as the right side. So it went in this way. Today, I thought I would use it the other way up and just see what a difference it makes. Does it, if it makes, you know, a dramatic difference or not. We'll wait and see, see what happens. So here I've cut a strip which is a bit wider than that. And the reason being, um, I don't want to waste um, a load of um, gilding flakes on here. If I put it in there and it actually moves a little bit, and I, you know, if it's a little bit wider, I can trim it with my trimmer afterwards to make sure it's absolutely square. So that's the reason it's a little bit wider. You could do it the, the exact width that you wanted if if you feel you know, you're happy in doing it to put it in your, uh, through your machine. So let's just get the backing off this. I'm going to um, just use this little brayer just to rub over this piece of um, adhesive sheet on here to try and make sure that all the adhesive is stuck on the card. If any of it sticks to the backing paper, then there'll be a little gap where the, um, the gilding flakes won't attach. So let's go and see how we get on with getting this backing sheet off. Here we go. There we go. I've used the right side of linen card because it does actually give a nice little bit of texture. We'll just see, take it off gently, just hoping that um, hoping that the adhesive all remains. Oh, there's a bit there I can see. Has jumped. Can't even see it on this side. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see how we go on. There we are. It is worth just trying to get it off evenly. So I've got two pots of um, gold here. I don't know which one's which. I don't know which one I used on that card. Um, we'll, use, we'll use this one. I don't know what it says. don't know if it's the same colour or a different one. Now, just a few, like I mentioned in the previous video. What's a bit of green got into that one? I think I'll fish that out. Looks like it might be a bit of um, ink or something. Not too much. You can always add more. If you don't have too much, then um, you don't waste as much. That's the, the bottom line, really. Okie dokie. There. Let's just drag this across. Makes a l it where well, if you use a sheet of gold leaf, you get a, a flat, more flat finish. But this one is kind of like marbles, more crazed. So pretty. Put a bit 
all up here. It's great to be um, back using a load of gilding flakes again. It's one of those things that you get and it gets put in a drawer very often and um, you forget about using it. I just do finish off this side up here. There is a tiny bit there with no gilding flakes on so I'm going to try and just put a bit of glue there and pop some a flake on top and just stick it. I'm not going to burnish that just yet on the, the gap because on the where the hole was because if I do I'll probably drag the flakes off. Okay, let me put the lid on this before I knock them for six. Right, if any of you wondered what the, the expression knocking for well, I often found myself saying it, knocked it for six, it's to do with cricket. Um, my husband and I um, are members of Hampshire cricket. We go to watch Hampshire play. And the highest score you can score by hitting the ball is to score a six. And it means you've knocked it out of the playing area completely. So um, that, that's where my knocked it for six, hit it for six comes from. Anybody who was wondering? Right, let me just get rid of these bits of um, leftovers. Right, there we go. There much waste there at all. Now this one I am going to put into my embossing folder with this at the front. The other one was that at the front so I'm going to do it this way. Now I'm going to place it in, try and get it straight. Okay. Now I have now that has moved, hasn't it? Somebody said to me, can you zoom in a bit? Somebody said to me, I, my hand has turned the dial, which alters the zoom on my camera. And it happened inadvertently, and I think it might have just happened again. I've turned my watch upside down, so the dial is on this side instead of that side, so that I wouldn't catch it with my hand. You can see there where I've caught it. Well, let's just let's just hope and see. Anyway, right, the sandwich for my um, Platinum 6 to get this through is a piece of card, a metal shim, and my bottom plate, which I put on the top. So I'm putting it card down first, then the metal shim, then my embossing folder, and then my bottom plate on the top. I don't know if it's right, wrong or indifferent, but if I put the metal shim on the top, it warps it incredibly, so it fares much better on the bottom. So there we go, that's why I do it. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, it's, look, it's so so pretty look at that you can see the difference between the two this one is concave this one is convex now i'm just going to burnish this a little bit make it a bit brighter oh isn't that gorgeous look at it don't you just love gilding flakes right now um I'm just doing the principles in this. I'm not assembling like I did there. So the next thing is I've got a couple of bits. I've got a bit of holly and a bit of ivy here. These ivy tendrils are beautiful. They are from um, Creative Expressions. Training Ivy, I think they're called. And what I want to do is to put them onto my foam pad and with an embossing tool, just gently rub the backs just a little bit 
so that they don't lie absolutely flat. If they've got, can you see the difference between these two? This is flat and they've got a bit of life, can you see? So, and if you want them to stay raised when you stick them onto your card, you can just put a tiny little bit of um, a, f a foam pad. You can get the little tiny squares or dots or whatever, or just cut a piece of fa uh, foam tape. Look at that, what a difference. Anyway, to colour them, I'm going to do what I did the other day, which is a little alcohol, surgical spirit or whatever, in a pot with a little mica. This is my mica, snow white mica powder, 100 grams of cosmetic grade mica powder, my goodness. So just paint that over. Oh, we've got a bit of green in here somewhere and that's because, because I dolloped one of those at the end. Won't matter though, won't matter. This is the end of it. The mica, this is regular card that I'm doing for these die cuts. And the fact that I'm using alcohol inks on them, um, I'm putting the, some, some surgical spirits, some isopropyl alcohol first, so that when I put the alcohol inks on, they don't just sink straight in, but they will diffuse a little bit. Okay, so let's put some colour on. I've got a whole bunch of greens here. I have got oregano, citrus, lettuce and bottle. Okay, let's have a little bottle. Just a tiny drop. Easier said than done. There's a big drop there. Oh, that'll do for that. I'm just going to pick this up and share it. There we go. Now, let's have, what's this one? This is citrus. Okay. And lettuce. Oh my. Uh, this oregano is it's it's very br it's a very brown green. So I'm just gonna drop this where the stems are. And um We'll just see what that does. There we are. Now, to, this time, this is one that I, I did earlier. I actually added a little bit of a metallic alloy, one of the alloy um, alcohol inks, which I've reasonably acquired. This one's called Statue. But it doesn't need much, and I think I I did the um, sharing bit again with this. So pick up this one. There we go. There. Aren't they pretty? Look at that. It's just a bit of dabbing around, really. But just look what... That one hasn't got any gold on. So you get a bit of gold. Oh, I think it's lovely. Now, here I've um, coloured a few ivy um, die cuts by dipping it into the residue of what was there before. So that's what I'm going to do again. There's some darker colours here. Just pick it up. Put a little bit more on. That one has picked up quite a lot of the mica. Lettuce, let's put some of this on. Oh, 
I'm, I don't know where this die came from actually. It's um, got lots of little bits and I just snip it up and um, it's got lots of places where I can add the berries. Can you see this one? I've put a couple of little pearls on. So when it comes to assembling your card, straighten up your strip. Um, wait when they obviously got to wait until these are dried and then you can pop a little bit of either a glue dot if you want it flat or a little um, tape uh, pad if you want it raised um, and then for the the sentiment I did exactly the same process I embossed with uh, no I didn't emboss I gilded a small piece large enough to take the die cut die cut it and then I've stacked a couple of layers underneath with an extra layer underneath the side that is not on here so that it lies flatter so I'm going to stop there clear up my mess assemble the next card and I really hope that you've had a bit of fun uh, watching this process these look at them aren't they lovely I just think they're fab okay well <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it.